Hello everyone, I'm Jared Falk, and in today's lesson, I'm actually going to be showing you how I set up my drum set, and I'm going to give you some tips that you can use when setting up your kit to make it sound, feel, and just play the best, all right? Now I'm starting with nothing around me. Well, all my drums around me, but I'm starting with nothing in front of me, okay? I'm starting with just my throne. Now, we're just first gonna talk about throne height. You know, how high should you sit in your throne? Now, everyone is a little bit differently, and sometimes you'll sit down on people's drum sets and it'll just be like, wow, how do you sit this low? Or how do you sit this high? And everyone's a little bit different, right? All of our bodies are created completely different. I'm a tall guy. I, I think I, I would consider myself a, a little bit above average as far as height goes, so I'm around 6'3". So my seat is generally higher than other people's seat, and that's totally fine. Now what I, what I want you guys to look for is the angle of your legs going down. Now I watched uh, a Dave Weckl video um, from the mid 90s or something like that and he was saying your legs should be parallel to the floor. Now if my legs are parallel to the floor, I would bring my seat down a lot, uh, almost like another six inches. I don't like that. I've tried it, I've been there. It doesn't feel good for me, especially when doing um, more intricate stuff on the double bass pedal, like some, some doubles and stuff like that. And so this way I find I can get a lot of control with my bass drum pedals and I can have my toms, you know, they're not angled like this towards me because I'm so hunched over and sitting down so far. So I like my legs angled slightly downwards, okay? Not quite parallel to the floor, but angled slightly downwards. This is up to you, how you want to do that. If you like it when they're parallel, go ahead and do that. The next thing you want to do is you want to set your feet down where they feel most comfortable, okay? Just what's most what is most natural. You don't want to say, I want this foot over here and this foot over here, and this is how I'm gonna play drums, my hi-hat's gonna be over here. This is absolutely ridiculous. I look, I look like a freak right now, and so I'm gonna move back to how I'm comfortable. Okay, so like this. This is where my feet are most comfortable. Then, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to bring in the bass drum, and I'm gonna put that right where my right foot was, okay? We've actually, for the filming sake, we've actually marked out where the pegs go, okay? Now my foot was right around there, okay? Now I'm gonna bring in the pedal and I'm gonna put that on the bass drum. I actually have a double pedal here. It's a Tama Speed Cobra double pedal. Just throw on the pedal because that's where my foot felt really, really comfortable. Tighten it up. Now that we have the bass drum pedal on, I want to talk a little bit about uh, having a double bass drum pedal with your setup. A lot of people will actually make this the priority over their hi-hat stand, and for me, I try not to do that. Unless I'm playing something that's heavy, heavy um, double bass related, you know, some sort of uh, fusion or some sort of heavier music like metal or something like that, then I'll try and make this a priority over my hi-hat foot pedal, all right? But otherwise, normally, you put your hi-hat foot pedal in where your left leg feels most comfortable and then build in this pedal around it, you know, somewhere either on the inside. And some people actually even put this bar over top of their hi-hat foot pedal and put it on the other side, all right? The next thing I want to talk about is my snare drum. And I'm going to put the snare drum right here where it feels most comfortable, okay? Let me grab that. Now, you'll notice the, the snare is a little bit below my belt is right here. So let's just grab a stick. It's a little bit below my, my belt line. So this is on a little bit angle going down. And that's the way I have it. I've seen some guys actually like crank up their snare and actually tilt it towards them. Uh, but the main thing for me is that when I want to get a rim shot, and a rim shot being the stick hits the rim and the head at the same time, I'm not punching myself in the leg. I've had, sometimes, some shows I've had my snare too low, and I wind up at the end of the night with just a massive bruise on my leg, okay? So don't let that happen. Put it somewhere where it's very comfortable, it's right in front of you, you can easily play it, you know, with, with both hands, and it's easy to get in the center, and it's just, it's a natural feeling, okay? And so that's where your snare should be. And it also shouldn't, your legs shouldn't hit it when you play the bass drum pedal, okay? So either side, my legs aren't rubbing against it. It's, it's close, it's a tight setup, but that's the way I like it. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring in the hi-hat pedal. Now, if you have a double pedal, you might uh, notice that it's hard to actually get a hi-hat stand in with your double pedal. So this one has, it's just a, a dual leg hi-hat stand. A lot of them have three legs, and so it's really hard to position them with the double pedal. So I'd recommend uh, getting one of these if you have a double pedal. Uh, otherwise, you might struggle with setting that up. 
Okay, and the same thing applies here is, is, is this comfortable? Do I feel like my body is being strained or being pulled in a direction that's not natural? And in this case, no, it, it feels really, really good. Now, as far as ease of, of hitting the hi -hats, it's they're right here, they're relatively close to me. I'm able to naturally, my arm without stretching, I'm not having to like stretch like this to hit the hi-hat, it's still by my side, and I'm able to easily hit the hi-hat right there, same with my left hand. You don't want the hi-hat way over here. I know I've seen it with some people, and then their left arm is like this, and their right arm is like this, and they wonder why it's hard to get an even single stroke roll, or why their, their left hand isn't as strong as their, their right hand. Well, your right hand's out here, probably working its butt off the whole time, and your left hand's nice and relaxed over here, or it could be the opposite. So it's important that both of them are relatively equal. They can't be 100% equal because the left hand's on this side and it's just this is a little bit more accessible for it than the right hand. Okay, so you want to make sure that's positioned right. And you also want to make sure that there's enough space between the hi-hat and the snare drum. Um, I've seen like Mike McCalco, he'll play like this, he'll bring his right hand out like this, so his left hand is free to come up, hit the snare hard, hit it nice and consistent. That's totally cool if that works for you. Uh, me, I don't always do that. I generally will play like this. Okay, with, which is just crossed. So I need to make sure I leave enough space in here. I can't have the snare, you know, an inch below the hi-hat. That's too close. My sticks are going to be clanking together the whole time. Okay, so this is the order in, in what I want you guys to do this in, okay? So bass drum, uh, pedals, snare drum, hi-hat. All right, so now let's start to bring in the toms. Okay, I'm going to bring in the 10-inch tom first. Okay, so now I have the 10 inch tom up and here again, I just want to make sure it's natural. Am I having to reach for it with either hand a lot? No, it's, it's great. What about the angle? If I hit the drum naturally, and you might just, every time you set a new piece up, just play a little bit. Make sure that you're not hitting the rims of the drum. Make sure it feels natural, especially when going fast between the, the high tom and the snare and just you know, do some quick rolls around there. Make sure you're not hitting the rims on either drum. Make sure you're still able to hit the snare in the center and this isn't really affecting that in a negative way. And like I said, nothing is being strained, everything is just natural. Another thing, and this is the reason I, I actually have my seat a little bit higher, is because I don't like to tilt my toms too much. You know, I don't like them angled towards me like that, so I'm having to hit them like this. I like to have this sort of approach and be able to just hit and come over on top of them. There's still a slight angle towards me, but not a lot, and I feel like I'm sitting over my drum set. I'm lording over my drum set, <laughs> okay? And uh, that's the way I, I love my toms this way. I've, it took me like over 10 years to actually like, you know, be 100% settled on a setup, and I feel like this is it now. Okay, so now I got the 10 inch tom in there. Let's not worry about the cymbal yet, even though it's here. We'll talk about positioning there later. But now I'm going to bring in the 12 inch tom. So now I have the 12 inch tom in here. And now one thing I want to do with this is make sure it's the same uh, height and same angle as my 10 inch tom. Okay, so right now it's a little bit flat, so I'm just going to turn it a little bit more towards me. And another thing I like to make sure is that the drums aren't actually, you know, hitting together like that, okay? So when I hit the drums or when the drums move, are they hitting each other? Because that's what happens if you're, if you're really giving her, um, the drums are going to move around, okay? So that's not happening right now, so it's good. And I also just, like, I'm, start, I'm having four toms, so I'm going to want to make sure I have room for the 14 here and the 16, okay? So again, is this natural? Am I having to reach for anything? Right now, it still feels and looks really, really good to me. Okay? Um, now, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring in the last two toms. These toms are actually mounted toms and they're not necessarily floor toms, even though I would still consider them floor toms just because of their size. Um, mounted toms means they're actually mounted to the drum and they're not mounted by floor tom legs, all right? So from the 12 to the 14, this might be an issue for some of you guys. You know, from the 10 to 12, you got the exact same height. Now, as soon as we go from the 12 to the 14, we're actually 
at a completely different level. And this is so we can position our ride symbol and our other crash symbols over here. Now, one thing, if you do use four toms, the 16 or the tom over here, for some reason for me, it's always been a struggle. Like now look at this arm compared to my right arm. This is something I was talking about the hi-hat there earlier. It's always been a struggle. So what I try and do is turn it away from me a little bit. So now it's not as much of a, uh, I'm not as held in here with my right hand, but my left hand is still stretched, okay? So now I'm just gonna play a little bit, I'm just gonna move around the drums. So it feels really natural to me. And you might look at it and be like, that's not natural at all. That's way too high or it's way too low or the toms don't have as much of an angle on them. And it's like I said at the beginning of this lesson, all of us are a little bit different in how our bodies are built and what is natural to us. And so it really is a subjective thing. You know, I'm hopefully giving you guys some tips here and stuff to try, but you have to just try it out for yourself and then you'll realize, will this work for you? or? or do you need to make some adjustments to make it suit your body style better, okay? So now let's talk about symbols. As far as order of importance here, the next thing I wanna do is I wanna bring in my ride symbol because I use the hi-hat, the ride, and then basically the first and second crashes the most. So those are my priorities. Like I already got my hi-hat set up, next I'm gonna bring in the ride symbol. Now to be honest with you, this is one I've always struggled with. I've ha I used to have it up here, but I found my arm was having to reach for it too much. And to actually play the ride, it was like, this arm was straight and this arm was down over here. So I tried to bring it over a little bit this way. So now I'm you know, relaxed in my left hand, relaxed in my right hand. So I actually put the ride in between my 14 and 16 inch toms. So for you guys who only have a five piece kit, this, would, this might feel a little bit awkward for you, okay? This is something that it took me a long time to kind of figure out that was most natural for me. I like, I still have access to the bell. It's just nice and relaxed. And I actually have a little opening here that I'm gonna put a set of extra hi-hats in as well. So it actually worked out really, really well. What I'm thinking I'm gonna do is gonna pull it a tiny bit closer. So the next thing I'm gonna do is position my main crash. And as far as uh, angle on the crashes go, I don't have them totally straight. Okay? They're angled slightly towards me. And when I hit a crash, I try not to hit it and just hit right through it. I don't think like uh, someone who does martial arts and just right through it, I'm not chopping at bricks here, okay? I don't want to wreck my symbols. So one thing I wanna keep in mind here is that when I play my 10 inch tom, I'm doing a, a fill here, I'm not actually gonna be hitting the 17 inch crash. And so right there, there's not a lot of conflict. So that's perfect. And since it's my main crash, if I'm playing a groove, I wanna have nice access to it to crash on the downbeats or hit accents or something like that. Okay, the next thing on position is my alternate crash here. And this is usually the one I hit the second most. And this one, I'm just gonna turn a little bit. And I've always struggled with this too because sometimes it feels too far away and then it feels too close. And so you might have to get a boom cymbal stand if you don't have one. If it is attached to the, the tom like this, it's always a little bit more challenging. So some of your toms will be attached to the bass drum and then you'll have, the cymbal will have its own stand and then it's sometimes a little bit easier, all right? Now you'll see some drummers have their cymbals way up high and I don't know, I just don't see the value in that or why they would do that. For me, it's all about accessibility. You know, is this symbol easy to get to? Yes, that's easy to get to, this one's easy to get to. 
And so at this point, I would just try it out. That feels really, really good. This is kind of your standard uh, drum set setup. A lot of you guys may, might only have one crash and a ride, and that's fine, and then three toms. But you can always add to it, right? And as you add stuff, you, it's good to know where should you add it in, what should you consider adding next. And as far as uh, drums and cymbals go, I think you know if you only have one crash, add in a second crash. And if you only have three toms and you want another tom, I would add in either a lower tom or a higher tom. You see, I could fit like an eight inch tom here, would be, which would be kind of cool. Um, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start to bring in more and more of my cymbals. And these other cymbals, this auxiliary stuff, it's not as important, you know, especially I'll bring a, a splash here on the left side of the kit. I'm not as concerned about being able to hit that with my right hand, you know? That's a cymbal that I'm gonna hit with my left hand, unless I'm turning over here and doing something uh, articulate on it or something like that, which is very, very rare. Um, same with over here. You know, this crash, I'm going to put one over here, it's only going to be hit with my right hand. I'm not going to play a groove and then reach over and hit with my left hand. So you have to position those with that in mind, okay? This will only going to be hit with my right hand, so I only have to worry about my right hand being comfortable when hitting that. Same with the ride cymbal there. Um, but this low tom, you know, my left hand sometimes moves over there, so I, I, it's something to consider. And this low tom. So let's bring in this 19 inch dark energy crash. And at this point, I just want to play it, make sure it feels good. feels great. You'll notice I also have a cowbell attached to this stand. Again, it's something I don't use a lot. A lot of you guys will actually clamp it to uh, the bass drum hoop. I don't feel like clamping anything to my bass drum hoop, and it would kind of get in the way of my leg. It's a bigger cowbell, so I put it over here. I was doing um, a 6.8 Afro-Cuban lesson a while ago, and so it hasn't left my kit since then. It's kind of cool to have on it. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring over my 16-inch crash. Again, angled slightly towards me. Let's try it out. So this one, I don't always hit with my right hand, it's more of a left hand crash symbol. Now I'm going to bring in my splash symbols. So I like to position one right beside the hi hat here, and that's why I have a little stand that has a boom on it, and I just bring it in right there. Try it out. Okay, so that's hitting this uh, this thing, this DW stand over here. So I have to try and bring it a little bit more to the left. So now I'm not going to hit anything there.
Feels good. I'm probably gonna make some adjustments. Um, try and lower it a little bit. Doesn't need to be so close. Then I can probably move it back over here a little bit. There you go. That's great. Now let's put in the six inch splash. One thing I also would consider doing is because this splash is a little bit too big to be in there, I might change, actually I'm gonna do that right now, I'm gonna change the 10 inch and, or eight inch splash, sorry. The best way to kind of figure out your setup is literally just take down your kit, reset it up. Take down your kit, reset it up. Just over and over again. That's what I did when I was young. I always was experimenting with different setups, never really satisfied with one way or, or certain, a certain setup. So that looks really good. Let's try these two. So just goofing around a little bit there, and it, they feel really, really good. They feel right there uh, for the little accents and stuff that I do. I like to do a lot of um, hi-hat work, 16th note stuff, and I like having two splashes there, two quick different voices that I can use. Some people will actually put the splashes in the middle. Some people will put one on this side of the kit, and that's fine. You can do it if you want. Now, the final thing I'm going to add in is just my auxiliary hi-hats. Now, this, you guys, this is stuff that... You don't have to have, it's not a necessity by any stretch. It's just something I like to have and over time this is the stuff that I accumulate. This is gonna be hard to set up. And there's the auxiliary hats, let's feel those. So there we have it. Now my kit is set back up. Over time, I'm gonna still make a few tweaks here and there, little symbol adjustments and stuff like that, but this is pretty much my setup. That's how I set up my kit. Uh, like I said, it is personal, it's subjective. However your body responds best or whatever setup your body responds best to, that's the setup you have to use. Just don't do anything that feels unnatural. Don't tweak one way when you know you shouldn't. Um, don't set something up a certain way for looks only because it's all about how it feels. Does it feel good? If it feels good for you, the music is going to sound way better, okay? Don't just go for looks. I know a lot of drummers do that nowadays, all right? So thanks so much for watching this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you in the next one. Hi. Hi, 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 h